Hi everyone, Blessed B. So I'm going to show you how to make a little mini litho altar in a dish. Obviously you can do this altar, you can do your altar for any Sabbath. I'm doing this one for litho because litho will be the next one that will come up in June. So first of all, what you do is you start off with your little dish. This is a little blue glass bowl that I got from the uh, thrift store, the charity shop. And it came with this like silver plate chalice thing it sits in. So it sits like that. I don't know if it used to be like a sugar bowl or something, I'm not sure. So find any little container that you really like the look of. Um, it could be a cup, it could be a bowl, could be... Um, a saucer, a dish, could be a little jar, anything at all. This is designed for if you have A, haven't got space, and B, if you're in the closet with your practice and you don't really want to share it with anyone, you can just have it in dis on display in this little dish as like a decorative item. Um, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my favourite thing that I like to add, which is some sand. This has already got some herbs and stuff mixed in because I do reuse the sand that I use in my little altars. So there's already some rose petals and lavender in here. Um, I'm not going to worry about getting those out because I'm going to add more. And the reason I like to put uh, sand in is because it represents the earth for me and also obviously I associate sand with being near the ocean which is my favourite thing. So this is my item that I add to my altar to represent the earth, like so. One thing I did forget though is to cleanse this first. Hold on. Put that in there. First of all, so first of all, I want to light some incense. This one is Dragon's Blood because it's my favourite. I can't light it for very long, but I can have it just for this for a little bit. I'm having to watch. Um, what I use at the moment because my asthma is very sensitive to fragrances and stuff at the minute because I'm already dealing with lots of um, issues with pollen and hay fever and stuff and that triggering my asthma. So first of all, I'm just going to use this smoke to cleanse my little dish. like so. I am going to have to put that out now. I would normally like to leave that burning a little bit but I can't at the moment. Then I'm going to use sand because it's always my favourite thing to add into any um, little mini altar um, because for me sand represents the earth and nature and reminds me of being by the sea. So I have, and there's already a little bit of lavender and rose petals in here um, because I've used this in my other mini altar, but that's fine because I'm going to add some more of that anyway. So let's just sort out the mess that now is my desk. Then what I'm going to do is add some rose petals. These are somewhere, I got some roses last year and dried them out and they formed these beautiful little dried buds, like so. These, mine don't particularly smell. Yeah, they don't really smell much, but I have got some from the shop, from the crystal shop that have like a nice fragrance to them. And I'm just gonna tear these up. First of all, I want some small one, small bits first that I can sprinkle around. And then I'm going to add some of my larger petals. And I'm going with 
uh, rose because it's associated with the season and also I like to use rose in my altar spaces. So I'm just unfurling the petals. I like the colours as you go down the uh, little buds and stuff. I like how you get these little yellows and golden colours mixed in as well. And I'm going to add some yellow flower petals. This one's only one, so I'm just going to rip it up and sprinkle. And I'm going to add these little yellow petals that I saved from a plant of mine. I can't remember what the plant was now. And I dried these out. Then I'm going to add some lavender from my garden that I also dried last year and these smell absolutely divine if you don't like the smell of lavender you don't have to include it obviously this is just what I like to use I use lavender in everything because I absolutely adore the smell and the advantage with this is if you're not ready to let anyone know that you are pagan this just looks like a little bowl of potpourri. So you could just say it's a bowl of potpourri. And you can also add to this um, some potpourri oils, uh, essential oils, anything like that. I'm not going to because I have to keep everything as fragrance free as possible so that I don't trigger breathing issues. Um, so for me, this is quite plain and it's just got a very delicate smell of lavender. And I have no issues with the delicate smell of lavender, so I can use that. Then what I'm going to do is place in the crystals associated with Letha. So Tiger's Eye. I'm just using the ones I've got. So Tiger's Eye. And there's, oops, and that one went right to the bottom. It's a bit of a, even though it's little, it's a bit of a heavier chunk. Let's put you on a, let's put you on a petal. There we go. And I don't have any jade or amber, so I'm not going to add those, but I am going to use a little quartz crystal cluster um, because you can use quartz crystal for anything, obviously, and it fits in with anything. And I'm going to use stand that in the sand. The sand helps to also balance everything. Um, so obviously the crystals, I can poke them into the sand if it was deep enough um, to make sure that the sand is, um, the crystals will stay in put. Then in my garden at the moment, there's lots of these beautiful little forget-me-nots that are growing. And I adore them. They, they fill up a large area of my garden in between when the other flowers come out. So I like to include those. These have been sitting on my altar, growing in a little pot. So I've picked some to go in here. Because obviously, Letha is all about summer. It's... You know, it's midsummer, it's the summer solstice. It's the day where um, the day and the night are equal length. And it's just, you know, we're celebrating that the summer has arrived. All the animals are growing well. Um, there's plenty to food to eat. Um, you know, everything is abundant. And nature is just full of colour full of life and you know there's just beauty everywhere at the moment the trees are in f full leaf so lots of um greens and blues and the reds are associated with this time of year um well when it's litter obviously um you don't have to necessarily do your little altar in a cup associated with a particular sabbath so i could use this for i could use this now um, I could use this for Letha, Letha. Um, and what you can also do as well is you could stand your ins if you put enough sand in you can stand your incense in the middle I haven't quite got enough sand in there oh I have so you can stand your incense stick in the middle 
obviously be careful. Um, obviously, if your incense stick is getting a bit low, uh, make sure there's no flame or anything around the dried flowers because obviously that will catch light. So do be careful if you if you use your incense stick in here. So what I tend to do is I'll put it at the side so all the ash will fall out outside of the dish. Um, you can always scoop up the ash after it's cooled and sprinkle it inside, it's fine. Um, but I tend to do it like this so there's nothing going to touch um, the dish at all, like there's dried flowers or anything. Um, but for now I'm not going to use that. Then I'm going to put this in... This is the little container it came with. And this is just a nice little mini altar that you can use. Obviously it's suitable for any small space or if you just don't want to tell anyone or you don't want to make it very obvious. Um, you know, if you're not ready to tell people or maybe you've got a family who won't approve of you following a pagan path. Um, or if you just want something nice and simple that you can set up and change quite easily. And it's also nice and cheap as well. So if you're on a budget, I mean, this little dish chalicey thing I got from the charity shop for a pound. And then the flowers I dried myself um, from the garden, apart from the roses. But the roses were just like a couple of cheap roses that I bought um, from the local supermarket. And I dried them myself. The lavender's out of my garden. The forget-me-nots are out of my garden. Um, so obviously you can use whatever you've got naturally growing in your garden. You could use um, dandelions if you want as well. I know they're like seen by a lot of people as weeds, but they're still natural and they are quite pretty. And they've got that lovely yellowy bloom that kind of looks like a sun. So you could use um, dandelions in here. And obviously they grow everywhere. And, you know, so you can do this if you're on a budget as well, which is another good thing about it. Um I'm not adding a candle to this and the reason for that is because obviously I've got lots of things in here that would catch light if a flame was anywhere near them. So what I can do is use, in conjunction with this, I've got my little candle holder which I've had since I was a teenager. It's a bit battered on one side um, but it's a beautiful little star candle holder. And I'll put my candle in there and I can have that placed on my table next to my altar dish. And I can always light the candle here. I'm going to just use this candle for now. I have got, if I can get the bits out of it, I have got um, a candle that's in the colours that would associate with the season. But I can't remember where I've put it. I've got one that's like an orangey coloured candle that I was going to use. But again, white can replace everything, so it's fine. You can use you can use white candles for whatever. It's fine. So it's always worth having oh, this is not gonna light. It's always worth having a bunch of white candles around so that you can use them in place of other things. Sorry, I had to dig in my drawer. I'll just use this one for now, use a new one. I don't know what, it's got bits all over it, it's been in my drawer. Oh well, never mind. <laughs> there we go, pop that in my little dish. And then I can light my incense. Just make sure the flame's out before it goes anywhere near your dish. And then just keep an eye on it. I'm going to put that, see if I can get it to balance in the middle. Kind of. Like so. There we go. So there you go, that's how to make a little letha altar in a bowl or any altar in a small space. Sorry about that 
bit of a judder then. I think my tripod moved then. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Blessed be and bye for now.